Greetings my fellow monkeys, today we're going to learn about the boost converter. The boost converter is a simple and efficient circuit which is used to convert a source of electricity from a low voltage to one of a higher voltage. The basic components of the boost converter are some type of power source, an inductor which is basically a coil of wire, most of the time wrapped around a ferrite core but it doesn't have to be, some type of switch here I've drawn a MOSFET, could be anything though, like a IGBT or a transistor. This is a diode which only allows current to flow in one direction and blocks it in the other direction. At the output there is a capacitor for storage of electricity and some type of load. The way that the boost converter operates is that during the switch on time, current flows from the source in this direction, passing through the inductor. As it passes through the inductor, it builds a magnetic field in the inductor, storing energy. Uh, when the switch turns off, uh, the magnetic field in the inductor collapses, and because of induction, it squirts its energy out, pulling current from the source, and it can't go through the switch because the switch is closed. Instead, it passes through the diode, and then is stored in the output capacitor, and also passes through the load. So here's a circuit board which I had made previously for a different project. All of this circuitry on here just uh, generates a pulse which goes to the gate of this MOSFET. Here's a diode. Uh, this is the inductor. It's a, a metal iron powder core. It's got several turns around it. This is a 820 ohm power resistor. And this is the smoothing capacitor at the output which is 250 volts and 20 microfarad capacitor. So what I'm going to do is connect the probes from the oscilloscope up to the different points on the circuit and we'll have a look how this operates. Okay, so I've made all the connections here. The uh, red probe is connected to the gate of the MOSFET uh, and the yellow probe is connected to the uh, drain of the MOSFET, so those are going to be voltage signals. And these two signals here are uh, going to be current. Uh, these are my two homemade current probes. The green uh, probe is going to be looking at the current which passes through the MOSFET and the blue probe is going to be looking at the current which is going through the inductor. So I've set the power supply to 8 volts and a limitation of 100 milliamps only which is uh, simply good practice to uh, put current limitation on and a low voltage when you're going to power up a circuit for the first time to see what it's going to do. So we're going to put the power on and hopefully it doesn't blow up. Okay, so we've got some signals on the uh, oscilloscope here. So I'm going to freeze the oscilloscope. And then I'm going to turn the power supply off because there's no point to just burn electricity while I'm uh, looking at the uh, scope. So the uh, again, the red trace is the signal which is going into the base and the yellow trace is the voltage on the drain of the MOSFET. So you can see that when the base goes high, the voltage on the MOSFET which goes to zero, which is what we expect because the MOSFET at this point is conducting. Uh, the green trace is the current which is passing through the MOSFET and uh, you can see that when the switch is open, the current rises linearly uh, and uh, the blue trace again is the current which is passing through the inductor. Uh, so at this point when the switch is on the green trace and the blue trace they're the ex they should be exactly the same because uh, and they are the same because they're, they're showing the current which is passing through the switch at that point. But when the switch turns off and is closed you can see that the current, the green trace in the MOSFET just goes to zero. Okay, there's all the oscillations, but forget about those. Those are just um, from parasitic inductors to capacitances. Actually, it's from the connection. It's a bad connection uh, because the probes are not, uh, you know, expensive here. This, this is all cheapy homemade stuff. Um, you can see that the current, uh, the green trace in the MOSFET goes to zero when the switch is turned off, which is perfect. And yet the current in the inductor continues to flow, but it, it's decreasing. And that's because when the switch is on and the current rises, it's building energy in the inductor, as I explained before. And then when, it's sw when the switch turns off, that energy in the inductor is being injected and is going through the diode into the load. And so the current is 
ramping down as the inductor releases its energy into the load. When the inductor has ejected all of its energy at this point here, you can see that uh, it's, the current in it goes to zero. And if you look up here at the yellow trace, you can see uh, something happening here. Um, Getting back to the inductor, while it still has energy in it and the current is passing through the inductor through the diode into the load at this point, you can see that the voltage on the MOSFET is flat. That's because the uh, diode is switched on at that point and this voltage really, uh, uh, the drain of the MOSFET, what, what you're seeing here is 0.6 volts um, of the diode voltage uh, above the uh, voltage which is on the load. Okay, is that clear? So this voltage here, which you measured on the yellow trace, while the, um, the switch is off, but the inductor is still uh, transferring its energy into the load, this voltage here on the drain, that is the voltage at the load minus, I mean, sorry, plus the voltage drop across the diode here. So, this, so if we were to measure this voltage, that would give us an idea of our uh, output voltage. So when the inductor has finished ejecting its energy, uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the diode will switch off because um, it's no longer conducting um, at that point. Uh, but there is still a small residual amount of energy left over in the inductor. But it's not enough energy to be able to turn on the diode and make it conduct. And therefore, that energy has to do something and it simply results in this tiny wave type oscillation. So that is what is causing that. It's a residual energy left over in the inductor, which is not enough to turn on the diode. Now, this uh, whole situation here, you can see that uh, at this point, as I explained previously, there is no more energy left over in the inductor, and after that there's nothing happening except for this pointless oscillation. And also here, before the switch has turned on, there's nothing happening here either. In other words, uh, when the switch turns on and then the energy is fully uh, ejected, it, it stops working and it's sort of uh, discontinuous. So this mode in a boost to, uh, boost to DC to DC converter is called a discontinuous mode, meaning after a certain point it stops and then it's just dead until it starts again. This is called a discontinuous mode. And there's another mode in a boost converter called a, a continuous conduction mode and uh, we're going to have a look at that next. And the way I'm going to do that is by increasing the frequency or the pulse repetition frequency, let's say, uh, of this by altering uh, these potentiometers here on this board. And we're going to take a look at that next. Okay, so let's try to change the uh, frequency to get into uh, the continuous conduction mode here with this boost converter. I'm going to increase the current limit because. We're going to be using more power. Switch on. Now I'm going to increase the frequency or pulse repetition rate. I'm going up now. I'm going up in frequency, but because of this uh, board, uh, the pulse rep the pulse width is also decreasing as I do this. But I'll just change that afterwards. So I'm coming up in frequency here. I'm just going to change, increase the pulse a bit. Pulse width. So now you can see I'm getting more power now, a little bit. Increase the frequency a bit more. Okay, I'll pause it for a moment and reset the uh, scope here so we can see better what's happening. Okay, the values of the current are small there, so I'm going to increase the pulse width more. Get some, get some decent current so we can see it. Decrease the voltage, yeah. Trigger. Okay, so Remember, the blue trace is the current in the inductor. When it reaches the, the lower part there, it's finished or almost finished discharging all of its energy. 
At this point actually you can see it more clearly from the voltage on the drain of the MOSFET. When the voltage is at the top here and then drops down, that's when the diode has stopped conducting and, and the inductor wants to go into this oscillation here. So I'm increasing the pulse width, adding more current, more energy into the inductor. So once I get the pulse width past this point, then we will be in continuous conduction mode. So there we are, that's it. I'll trigger properly here. So now you can see that the current in the inductor is just this sort of triangular waveform. And basically in continuous conduction mode, it means that, um, it means that the before the inductor has finished ejecting all of its energy, we turn the switch back on again and deposit more energy into the inductor. So the inductor never fully discharges, but is uh, continually being filled up with energy. Uh, generally, this uh, mode can take a little bit more power, as we see here. Um, and that's it, really. Uh, I just wanted to showcase the uh, waveforms on, on a scope for the boost converter for the two different uh, modes. Uh, there's a lot more detail that one can go into on uh, boost converters, but I think that that will be better served in separate dedicated videos. Of course, if you like this content, then uh, you feel free to support the channel using the links below. And of course, if you would have any questions, then feel free to post uh, in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you later.